welcome to today's video. So today, as you can tell from the title, I'm going to be talking about how my husband and I got married for under $3,000. Um, so very low budget wedding, but I honestly think that it was an amazing wedding. Um, I will insert some photos and stuff so you guys can kind of see what it looked like and you can actually see some of our wedding pictures up there. So. I think it turned out super, super well. We had tons of fun. It was perfect. Like everything turned out perfectly, even though we didn't spend nearly as much as a lot of people spend on weddings. So I'm just gonna give you guys some tips and at the end I'll break down what we actually spent the money on and how much in total it ended up costing. So we're gonna start with the tips. I have some notes here just so I don't forget anything. So. The first thing that I just wanted to say is I, we could not have done this without our friends and family. Um, family really came through and provided a lot of the food and stuff and friends just came through and really helped out with some stuff which I will talk about later as far as what they actually did and who helped with what and that kind of thing. But seriously, if, we could not have done it without our friends and family. So that was the first thing I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone that helped out and everyone who used their skills and talents and some money to help us with this wedding so that we could, you know, save a little bit of money on being able to furnish our apartment and save some money and, and do that kind of thing. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to all the friends and family. Um, but the act first actual tip that I have is when you find out you're gonna get married, when you get engaged, set a budget and do your absolute best not to go over that budget. I know it can be hard and I think there were some areas that we spent a little more money on than what we originally really wanted to, but do your best to sit down, say this is the maximum amount of money that we can spend, what are we gonna spend it on? That is my first tip, make a budget, stick to the budget, do the best you can, talk to your fiance, what do you want, what do I want, how much can you contribute, how much can I contribute, talk to your parents if they're gonna be, you know, helping you out at all, how much can you contribute, just make that budget and do your absolute best to stick to it. And along those same lines, when you go into places um, to pick out some of the things that you're wanting, don't let them talk you into spending more. So for me, when I went in to go get my wedding dress, which was honestly one of the only places that I really kind of talked to people about pricing and that kind of thing, um, I went in and I said, hey, I'm spending this amount of money. I don't want to see anything that isn't over that. And just be really firm with that so that people know, hey, this is all I have to spend and I'm not willing to spend more than that. So make a budget, stick to the budget. That's the first tip. The second tip is kind of along those same lines. When you're planning out the budget, only spend money on the things that you actually care about, okay? You don't need to have everything that everyone else has at weddings. If there's things that you don't care about as much, you and your fiance, if you don't care about it, don't spend money on it. So for us, we didn't really care about having a DJ. We were like, hey, we can just get a Bluetooth speaker, play, make some playlists, and still dance, still have a good time but we didn't feel like we needed to spend, I don't even know how much DJs are, but probably $500 on a DJ or more, who knows? So only get the things that you want. It's your wedding. If you don't care about certain things, don't spend money on them. I mean, the same goes for everything in the wedding. If you don't wanna do something, if there's something traditional that you don't wanna do, don't do it. Just don't have it. It's your wedding, do whatever the hell you want. So that's the second tip. Only pay for the things that you want. Okay, third tip, kind of alluded to this in the beginning, but ask your friends and family for help. And I don't just mean financially, I mean what can they do? What, what can they do that I would normally be spending money for? For example, we had one of our friends that was our DJ. I know, we didn't, I know I said that we didn't pay for a DJ, but we did have a friend that was sitting there with a phone that had the playlist ready to go. He had a really nice speaker, and he was the one that played, you know, started the song as I was walking down the aisle, and, you know, kind of switched the songs to get people to dance, and played our first dance song, and that kind of thing. So we had a friend that was there that could do that. Another thing, my parents and my fiance's, now husband, <laughs> um, his grandparents helped a lot with preparing the food and that kind of thing, which I'll talk about more in just a little bit. So that's one thing. And then another thing, we had 
family friends that provided roasters for the food so that we didn't have to go and rent those or get those with what was being catered in. We, you know, asked, hey, does anyone have some roasters that they can, you know, let us have for just a weekend? So that was one thing. And then another huge thing, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, to my friend Bianca, who was actually one of my bridesmaids. She did my hair for me and she did such a good job and she didn't charge anything. And I literally cannot thank her enough. Uh, I'll insert some photos of the hair and her doing it. She did such a good job and that was just, I knew that she was really good at hair because she had gone to cosmetology school for like a year. So it was like, hey, can you maybe do my hair? And she said yes, and it absolutely turned out amazing. So don't think you have to spend money on absolutely everything. Use your resources, see what your friends and family can help you with. Seriously, it helps so much. I know it's hard to ask for help for things, but it can honestly really cut down on the price of your wedding. Tip number four. So this honestly saved us so much money because it would have probably cost us everything that we had actually spent if I had gone big on this, or if we had gone big on this. So it is look for a cheaper photographer. And I don't mean hire your cousin's nephew or whatever, because definitely in the beginning when I was looking for photographers and we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do with this, there was a lot of, hey, like this family friend takes pretty good photos. What do you think? I didn't want to go that route. If you want to go that route, awesome it'll save you even more money but me I really wanted to have good photos that didn't cost three thousand dollars so I went ahead and got on Instagram and I looked at the like tags for the location that I'm close to and kind of looked at different places different wedding venues and parks and things where photographers take a lot of pictures and I was able to find a lot of professional photographers and I would go and I would look to see how much does this photographer cost and if it was over the budget that I had for that I was like okay I can't afford this person so I kept looking and kept looking and kept looking and finally I found the amazing Katie um, she is relatively new to photography well she's not new to photography but she's just starting out on her own she was a second shot at a lot of weddings before ours but this was her first solo wedding so she was a little bit cheaper than a lot of other photographers so you can find a photographer that is gonna do an amazing job that's also a little bit cheap I totally understand why photographers are expensive their equipment is expensive editing takes forever it takes a lot of work to be on for, you know, the whole eight to nine hours that you're at a wedding. But seriously, there's photographers out there that are cheaper that are still gonna do an amazing job. Find someone who's just starting out, get them, you know, some experience. Like it was helping because, you know, now she has all these amazing photos that she can use and show people and be like, hey, I can do a good job. And then eventually she's gonna be able to start charging more and more money but there's photographers out there that are just starting out. Look for them. Seriously, I got so discouraged because I didn't think that I was gonna be able to get a photographer that was in our budget, but I kept looking and I finally found one and Katie did such an amazing job. I cannot recommend her enough. If you're in the Northern Indiana, Michigan area, uh, check out the link in the description for her because she did such a good job. Tip number five, keep the food simple. So we, looked at some different catering places and definitely found out that we didn't want to spend that much money on food. So we went ahead and this is one area where family and friends really helped out. Uh, my parents actually ended up purchasing a lot of the food. His grandparents ended up purchasing a lot of the food. So it was one area we actually didn't spend any money on food. But we were able to still keep it really, really cost effective by getting just some meat catered in, which I'm a vegetarian, so I didn't actually eat that, but we also had roasted potatoes and baked beans. I think that might be it. Oh, and mac and cheese. So my aunt helps with the mac and cheese. So again, ask those friends and family for help. Keep the food simple. You don't need a steak dinner unless you want a steak dinner. If you want a steak dinner, spend money on that steak dinner. If you don't, don't spend money on that steak dinner. Keep it simple. Along those same lines, if you don't want alcohol at your wedding, don't have alcohol at your wedding. I would have been okay with having alcohol at our wedding, but alcohol's really expensive. And people like to drink at weddings. Like, I'm not gonna lie. It's a fun time when people drink at weddings, but 
it can be really, really expensive to provide an open bar for people. So unless you really want an open bar, don't have an open bar. If they want a drink, they can bring their own. So that's one thing. Just don't, don't spend money on things you don't care about. That's kind of the trend here in this video, but we weren't interested in providing everyone with alcohol to get drunk, so we didn't do that. And it was still really fun. They were still dancing. It was a great time, so keep it dry. Okay, and the biggest thing was we did not actually have a venue. So we ended up starting out looking at what venues would cost and we're like, hey, wow, that's really expensive. So what I ended up doing was sitting down and thinking about, okay, what do venues provide? And is it possible that we can rent those things and have it at my parents' house? My parents have 10 acres of beautiful wooded land. They have a really beautiful water garden that they finished just before the ceremony. Um, so with that, we were able to rent the tables and chairs and rent anything else that we might need or purchase anything else we might need and we were able to not have a venue which ended up saving us probably the biggest amount of money here because really the only thing that we needed to rent that a venue would have had were those tables and chairs and it ended up not being that expensive which i'll go over in just a second so that is huge way that we ended up saving so much money because venues can be you know five thousand dollars and we didn't have to do that. And thank you to my parents for allowing us to have the ceremony at their house. It ended up being so perfect. It was amazing. So that is one huge way that we saved money. Think about it. Do I need a venue? Is there somewhere else that I have it? Could I have it at a state park for a little bit cheaper than what an actual wedding venue place would be? Look at your options. Don't think that you actually have to go and get that really big ticket venue. Keep it cheap. Okay, so now I'm gonna actually go through and say exactly what we spent. So the first thing was my wedding dress, which I honestly kind of regret spending this much on my wedding dress because I was able to actually find some cheaper alternatives that I think would have been just as nice, uh, or at least close to just as nice for a lot, lot cheaper than that. So I did splurge on this a little bit, which I don't know if that was the best thing, but it ended up turning out great, and I don't regret it a ton. It was just, in retrospect, I may have spent a little less. But anyways, it was $587.43 for the wedding dress, and then the alterations were $364, which was really expensive, but it was a lace dress, which meant they had to, at the bottom, when they hemmed it, they had to basically cut it off and then reattach the bottom with lace, which meant they had to go very intricately and re-lace the whole bottom. So I understand why it was so expensive, but yeah, that was really expensive. Um, so that was probably the biggest thing. Yeah, that was the biggest thing that we spent money on was my wedding dress, which is fine. It looked great, so. And then my shoes were only $33. I picked them up at like Payless or one of those places since my dress was all the way to the ground I didn't really care about having a super nice pair of shoes and because they were gonna be covered so I just picked some really nice well not really nice but <laughs> cheap sandals then in being really comfortable didn't get any blisters was able to wear them all night and be totally fine so and then flowers we ended up ordering online I'll link the place that we ordered them from I um, was a little nervous about ordering them online but they ended up being beautiful. I actually still have some eucalyptus, so I think I'm actually gonna go grab that and show it to you guys. So this is the eucalyptus that was from our wedding. We just had, this was just left over here. I'm not really sure how it ended up at our apartment, but yeah, it still smells amazing. And it's been like a month and a half since we got married or something like that. So yeah, the eucalyptus was gorgeous. The, other than eucalyptus, those two varieties, we got white roses, which were really, really nice for the day, but they obviously didn't last super long because they were white roses. But yeah, ordering them online, it honestly was great. They came really fresh and in nice boxes, and I ended up making the bouquets by myself, and they turned out super good, which I'm really impressed by because I'm usually not the most creative person or artsy, and they look awesome. So that was flowers, that was 250, and then the photographer, which I talked about earlier, 
She was 600, which was so much cheaper than a lot of other alternatives were. So definitely, I'm so happy with that. Uh, I would spend $600 a million times over on that. So that was great. And then Brandon's suit, I believe was around $300. I don't remember for sure, cause he got it a really long time ago. He was really on that. <laughs> But I think that was around 300 and then the bridesmaids and um, the groom, groomsmen, the groomsmen uh, did purchase their own stuff, uh, which was awesome of them. Uh, seriously appreciate that so much. And then our officiant was a family friend, but she did charge money, so she was $125. She did a great job. And then our tables and chairs were 225 which was definitely cheaper than a venue, so super glad we did that. And they were nice, like the chairs were white and they looked really, really good. And the tables were kind of, but we ended up going to the dollar store and getting just tablecloths for like a dollar each. So that was super cheap. Uh, and they were white tablecloths, so it kind of covered up because the tables were like wooden and eh. But with the tablecloths, they looked great. And then um, I didn't end up getting a wedding band, but Brandon did, and that was a little less than $100. Um, it was 93.69. So I didn't get a wedding band just because I'm wearing my ring on the wrong finger. <laughs> Let me switch that. So I just have my engagement ring, which I'm totally fine with. Um, my grandma passed away a couple years ago and she actually gave me and my sister her engagement ring and wedding band. And at some point I would really like to get the diamond taken out of that and make it into a wedding band of some kind. I don't really know what I want to do with that, but I think that would be really cool. And like with what we spent on the wedding and everything, that just wasn't really in our budget to get that done right then. So I just have the engagement ring and we just used that to put back on my finger, um, which was fine with me. Again, if you don't care about something, don't spend money on it. And then the food, again, family and friends, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. They seriously helped out so much with the food. Um, I don't know what the total would have been, but I don't think it was excessively high, um, just because we kept the food really, really simple. And that brings us to our grand total that Brandon and I spent of $2,484.43, which I think is awesome. Definitely came in under $3,000. Um, it turned out great. I'm really, really happy with the way it turned out. We didn't break the budget on a wedding and I still think it was great. As you guys can hopefully tell from the pictures, it turned out so fun and so beautiful. And at the end of the day, we got married, which is kind of the goal. So yeah, that is our under 3000, actually under $2,500 wedding. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you're interested in sticking around, I'm 26 and newly married and I work a nine-to-five job uh, in uh, the environmental sector uh, and I do personal training on the side and now I'm doing YouTube on the side so if you're interested in sticking around that'd be great just subscribe and uh, if you've gotten married comment below on how much you spent if you're okay with that <laughs> if it's more that's awesome if it's less that's awesome um, but this was just what we spent so I hope you guys uh, found this helpful. If you're, you know, are engaged and you're planning a wedding, go ahead and comment down below when you're getting married and I'd love to hear from you guys. So thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye.